Well, here it is. It's finally at last. I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time for this, but here it is. It's the build video for the FPV backpack circuit board, that the real heart, the guts of the whole thing, the bit that makes it work. And I've done this video, I don't know how many times now I've done the build video, and it's, it's always turned out, it's never been, I've never been happy with it. And uh, being a bit of a perfectionist is a bit of an issue. So this time it still didn't work out the way I wanted it to, so I thought, I'll blow it. I'll just publish it anyway. And last time I had some technical issues because I tried to do it all in one go and that came up with some issues in respect to uh, rendering and other things so this time I've decided to do it in two parts so this will be the first part the second part will follow very shortly and I urge you to go watch all the way through the video before you actually leap into it and start building because I've made a few mistakes along the way and I correct them as I go through later in the video but that's it this is the sort of the key crucial component of the whole backpack and after the two parts for building the board there's only one part left and that's sort of the physical uh, construction of the backpack part itself using I just use core flute for mine or coroplast depending on which part of the world you live in and that's pretty easy hot glue gun some plastic and away you go so there you go let's get on with the circuit board build for the FPV backpack we need a few bits and pieces obviously need some tools side cutters and long nose pliers and also some tweezers these are special tweezers for working with surface mount components um, the very tiny components that we're going to be mounting directly on the board and of course we're going to need a board and here's a board I've prepared earlier now this is one I've etched myself uh, using the toner resist etch method so it provides a, a convenient way to do this sort of thing at home if you want to it's a um, it's a fairly simple board as far as boards go and the design for this is on the website so you can go there and download the um, Eagle CAD files to print your own board and I'll be doing a video soon that shows you how to do this whole toner resist thing but if you if you want to know go online on YouTube there's plenty of videos now showing you how to use toner resist to make your own circuit boards and of course the key to this whole thing the heart of the whole backpack is this and that's a little 5.8 gigahertz 200 milliwatt video transmitter module it's a little circuit board all on its own and it has a little metal cover on there so that it doesn't actually uh, radiate stuff that you don't want radiated and inside there there's a whole raft of components you wouldn't want to build that yourself that's why it's so nice to have it all done in a little module ready to go for you the sources of all the components that I'm showing you here is on the website if you go to the website you'll find a page that has all these bits and pieces on it now also of course you're going to need some solder remember leaded solder none of your happy stuff thank you you're going to need the lead that we made up previously when we did the camera lead this is the other half of that extension that was wired up to the camera we're going to need of course the antenna that we've already made and that was in a previous video as well so here's the antenna and then you're going to need some components some electronic components and there's, there's two types of components we're going to be using on this board um, one type is what we call through hole and this is where it's a component that's got regular wires on it and the wires on these components the legs as they're called will go through the holes on the circuit board so that makes it really easy to solder together but as you can see these components can be quite large these are a couple of the capacitors that we're going to be using and they're quite big so I've tried to keep the use of these to a minimum um, I've chosen these because they're cheap and easy and readily available we're going to need one of these this is a dip switch it's a three pole dip switch for setting the channel on our FPV backpack now you don't have to use this um, if you don't want to use it then you can just leave it and it'll default to the standard channel which is channel one or something channel zero or something so if but if you want to be able to change channels then this is really really useful to have um, again a link on the website to something that'll do the job and here we have the first of what we call our surface mount components and these are tiny tiny little these are capacitors and they're very small as you can see tiny little things now these capacitors mount directly on top of the board they don't have wires on them there's no wires on these components they're just the, the basic components so they will mount directly on top of the circuit board and they're called surface mount and then we have the regulator that's also going to mount surf on the top of the circuit board and that's another surface mount component and they usually come in um, reels like this so you can buy them one off and um, most companies will cut a bit off the reel and you'll just you know, use the one component also going to need some wire and I've just got some servo extension wire here that uh, I'm using it has to be nice and flexible wire 
with good insulation you don't want to use single core you know solid copper wire that's no good because it'll flex and break we're going to need some heat shrink and also we've got a diode here it's another one of these through hole components because it's got wires i've bent this leg already the other leg will have to be bent as well and this is a 1n4001 or through 1n4007 diode again links on the web page so you can find out where they are um, and here we have something called some pin headers well these are actually just little stiff pieces of wire that are molded into a plastic strip and we're actually going to pull those out of there we're not going to use the the base we're going to pull those wires out of there um, and put them in the board so that we can easily solder this wire to those pins makes life nice and simple some other tools you might want of course your granny glasses because if you're like me and you're old and these some of these bits are really really small you don't want to be uh, trying to use your aged eyes if you're as old as me and oh, reaches into shot for a minute um, a flux pen now you may not need the flux pen certainly if you're working with a commercially made board because these will be available you can be able to buy them online they're bare boards um, if you're going to work with those boards then um, you will probably won't need the flux pen but if you're making a board yourself a flux pen is really really handy so there we go that's our must-have list oh not to forget of course our soldering iron a nice as i mentioned before nice somewhere at you know 25 to 30 watt soldering iron with a medium to small size tip that's all we need now we can get going now one of the first things you've got to do is put all your bits safely away because otherwise you will lose them don't ask me how i know that but i know that so i generally get a tin or a box or something that i can throw all my little components in because let's say some of these are quite small and are easily picked up more easily picked up with the little tweezers so what we want to do is safely put all those away leaving out our circuit board and then print out a copy of the component layout sheet and you'll find that on the website print it out at two or three times normal size so it's nice and big and you can see exactly where all the bits are going to go if you print it out just one you know normal size it'll be as small as the board and you'll have more trouble finding out where things go so there we go so now we orient the board in the same direction as the component sheet so that can be a bit tricky but you'll spot the the way things to look for are stuff like these connectors along or these holes along the side here here they are they're along the side of the circuit board so that's the the correct orientation and now we've got to do a bit of uh, preparation work because um, if you've the surface mount components are going to solder directly on the top of this board so we've got to actually tin the board first put some solder on there so that the components can be soldered onto it it's important that you get a little bit of solder on there first and then you can put you'll see when I do it the components will just sit on top and melt down onto the solder so I'm going to do that now so I need to turn on my soldering iron <laughs> and as I say um, a good iron tin the tip make sure it's nice and hot but not too hot that's why temperature control is quite useful now the first thing as I say we're going to do is just solder these little square or rectangular lands as they're called where the surface mount components are going to go and I've prepared this board it's covered with a thin layer of polyurethane lacquer so that means that the solder will take but you've got to uh, you've got to be a little bit careful when you do it but put me granny glasses on for this because I can't see well enough with the naked eye to do this small stuff and now remember that the commercial boards will already have this tin there'll already be a obvious place where the solder is going to go so I'll just tin these up like so and with because it's got lacquer on it I have to actually uh, give it a bit of a rub with the soldering iron tip to get it to sit but you can see and there's another one here another one here try not to put too much solder on. I think I put a little bit much on these I might have to take some off with my desoldering braid but this will give you a bit of an idea what we're looking at really just want a quite a thin layer of of solder on these particular things now on this little piece here there's a bit there's a tiny little bit of solder bridging the edge of the circuit board and to get rid of that you get your flux pen and you just put a bit of flux on there like so and you heat it up with your iron and the flux pulls away and the solder miraculously pulls away from the edge leaving it uh, without a little short circuit there that's why the solder the flux pen is quite useful if you're doing your own boards you can get around any little problems like that so we've got some more down here to do 
hope I'm getting this on camera because it's a lot harder when you're trying to fiddle around. Um, I think that's all. One other surface mount part over here. As I say, on the commercial boards, it's all done for you. You don't have to mess around with it. But there we go. I've soldered up all the little pads for the surface mount components. And I'm going to have to take a little bit of solder off some of those because I put too much on. So how do you take off any excess solder? We use something called desoldering braid. But as I say, if you're going with the commercial boards, you won't need to use this. But you can see when I put this braid down, it acts like a bit of a wick. In fact, sometimes it's called desoldering wick. And it sucks up the excess solder that I happen to get on there. And there we go. It's pretty much nearly done. Another base over here. There we go. So now I've got some nicely tinned lands on my circuit board. So now it's time to get going and put some components on, which is always a good idea. And as I said, these components are really, really small. So I'm going to take one out. You just peel back the little plastic, tip it out like so. And this is a little ceramic capacitor. It's really, really tiny um, and it has to go on this board. And if we look at the circuit diagram that I've printed out, you'll see that the, I should leave this down so you can see it. You'll see the ceramic capacitors go here and here. So that equates to there and there. So we've got to position the capacitor on the board in the right place like so. And this all looks very fiddly, I know. Um, but that's just what you have to do when you're dealing with really small electronics. And now I should be able to just apply a little bit of heat to the edge of this pad here to melt the solder. Here we go. Now that should have, with luck, that will be hold up. See, it's stuck on there. It's not going anywhere. So now I can get my solder and solder the other side with just a tiny little amount of solder. And remember, you've got to use quite thin solder here. I'm using, I think this is um, 0.8 millimeter, but something like 0.6. Oh, wasn't stuck down. See that? So I'll just position it in the right place and I'll just feed a bit of solder in here. Now, if this scares you, to use my tweezers, if this scares you, then maybe putting these boards together isn't for you. Okay. Hopefully that is stuck this time. So go around the back and solder the back side. So the idea is to get one end stuck first and then do the other, but I've noticed that's a bit proud. This isn't going particularly well. My hands are shaky. It's late in the day. I've had too much coffee already. So you can use your fingers if you want to. Just check that that's positioned nicely. It's still a bit crooked. There we go. You shouldn't have to add heat for very long to get it to go on. That's okay. It's a bit crooked, but I can't really see what I'm doing with the camera in the way, so just have to make do. Here we go. We heat stuff up and we just pour the solder in. We get a nice solder joint. Go back and do the other side of this. And of course, the order in which you do this is quite important because some of these components may block access to other components that you want to solder on. So we do these capacitors, these two capacitors first. That's one. There we go. Hopefully you can see that capacitor soldered onto the board there. Just a little bit of solder on each side, just enough to give it a electrical contact. And now I'll do the other capacitor. Doesn't matter which way around these go, I should point out, because they're not polarized like some components. So now this capacitor goes across here. So let's put them in place, hopefully, like so. And again, hopefully I can just heat up that pad and it will. I probably didn't put quite enough solder on. I took too much off when I was doing it before. So it's not quite enough to hold it. Maybe this one will have held. Oh, yes, there we go. I got it right. Got it right this time. And so now I can put solder on the other side. Just to make sure I'm in shot to do all this. There we go. I'm going to go back to this side, which was only temporarily. Okay, so now I've got to put the regulator on. And as you can see, just get some of the mess out of the way here. Bench is getting messed up. The little regulator just sits on here. So just working from the diagram up there that I've printed out. So now 
with luck. It's such a cramped little bench I'm afraid. I'll hold this roughly in place and apply some heat up here. There we go. It's held, held it on at the top. So now I can go in and I can solder on its little legs here. Just using a tiny bit of solder to add to the solder that's already there. I say it's important you don't use too much because it will short out if you're not careful. So there we go. Just check that one out. Beautiful, I think. Now we do the top one again because I only just sweated that. Just needs a little bit more solder to make it make it good. Get everything warm. There we go. It's all flowed nicely. So let's have a close-up look at that. So there's that little part there, all nicely soldered into place on the board. So those are basically our surface mount components. There are a couple more here that we use for microphone if you want to add a microphone, but oh, I don't usually bother with a microphone on a backpack, but I put the circuit board in there if you want to add those. I should point out that at this stage, if you're concerned that you may have shorted something out, then you get your multimeter, put it on continuity, and you can actually check to make sure that you've, uh, you haven't got short circuits here. So if I go from, if I find a nice earth position, which is here, no short circuit there, nothing there, and nothing there. So that hasn't shorted out. It's all good. And the next component is the diode. And if I pull this into frame, you can see the diodes up here. And this is what the diode looks like. Notice it's got a band on one end that has to go to the same end as the band on the diode. So if I turn this around so it's facing the right way again, you can see that the diode goes across there between these two holes. Now, obviously, We've got to bend the wires and that's why you need your long nose pliers like this and you can just eyeball this get it roughly right doesn't matter if it's not perfect so i'll straighten that a bit and just try and get it so that when you put it in there's not going to be any stress on those components legs so here we go see if this works hopefully now that i've bent that to shape it will just fit in the board like so there you go and uh, as you can see it's actually just right because it actually fall out if I put it the other way so there is that diode and now we have to solder it up on the back side this is one of our through hole components and we can see why it's called through hole because it fits through holes on the circuit board so now we just heat up our iron and a bit of solder whoops should clean the tip a bit first it's a bit grubby here we go Hard to do it as I say with it. The camera in the way it makes such a difference, makes it so much harder to put these things together. And here we go. Having done that, you find that the wires are a bit long, aren't they? So you have to cut those off with our side cutters. Try and cut them as close to the board as you can. Like so. And that then gives us our circuit board with the diode on it. Just double check that the diode's actually pointing in the right direction because if it's not, this isn't going to work. Now, if you made this board yourself, if you're doing the, the etch it yourself process, you're going to have to do something quite tricky at this stage because one of these holes actually has the circuit trace. Get rid of that. The circuit trace comes along here. Oh, this is for our little switch to change the channel. But the problem is that. We're going to have our switch sitting on top of this section of the board, so we can't solder that to the switch. Here's the switch here. You can see if I put the switch in place, like so. Hopefully I can get it in place. Because sometimes granny glasses are a curse rather than a bonus because I can't see where I'm putting things. Right, yeah. So when I put the switch in place like so, I can't get under the board to solder the wire to the top surface. And uh, so what I have to do here is actually put a very fine wire through this hole so that it's actually connected to the top pad as well. Now, if you're buying the commercial board using the commercial board, this is not a problem because they plate all the way through the holes. They're automatically the top is automatically connected to the bottom. But I'm just going to have to do that. I won't show you. It's a pain in the backside. We'll cut that bit out. OK, what I've done is I've actually put a very, very fine piece of wire through the hole. If I can get this to focus. I may or may not be able to. 
there we go through this hole where is it I'm going to find it now through this hole here I put a very very fine piece of wire to connect the front surface to the back surface and I've just soldered it in place so it's like having a plated through hole if you don't understand what that means then you're probably better off buying the commercial board so now we've got our little switch our multi-way dip switch here which if we look at the turn everything around so it's facing the right way we can see that switch is here in respect to the diagram so turn my board around to match and it's up here Gosh, this is so damn hard could wear my granny glasses and everything um, so this little board simply this little switch goes in here we turn it over and it's through hole it's through hole like our diode was so now we can solder on the wires on the back this is not going to be easy with all these things in the way so when you're doing through hole stuff like this it's got lots of legs just do one leg first and then bring it around make sure it's all straight and lined up properly so that you're happy with the result and then you can do the other legs And this probably isn't a good angle, unfortunately. The bench is too small to get good camera angles. When I get to the workshop and put in my new workbench, all this stuff will be so much easier. I'm hoping. Oops. There we go. This doesn't the solder doesn't flow as easily on this because I've got a lacquer on it stop the board from corroding because it's a homemade board so there we go I think that's done enough can I get a focus on this please where are we here we go so that's now soldered in place as you can see next we put on the capacitors and these are electrolytic capacitors so they're polarized if we look at an electrolytic capacitor move my glasses around so I can see that you're seeing the right thing make a bit of space here if you look at the electrolytic capacitor it has a polarity marking on one side like this one has a negative that means that this wire here is the negative wire so it's important that you get the polarity right that's where you have to refer to your diagram make sure that when you put it in you've got the negative wire to the right side the positive wire to the right side now down here on this circuit board this capacitor is the one that goes right down in the corner here and the positive goes to the bottom so I turn it around so that there we go that's the way it should go the negative is on this side same as on the circuit diagram and it's through hole so I can put it through and with some of these through holes because they'll fall out you can actually just give the component legs a little bit of a splay out so when you tip it upside down it doesn't fall out it gives you a chance to to solder it up which is what I'll endeavor to do now Make sure it's nice and straight. Do the other side. You can get these little things that have clips and hold stuff for you, but uh, I'm old school. I just make it make a mess instead. There we go. So again, we've got some component legs dangling at the bottom. We just snip those off with our side cutter. Word of warning: mind your eyes when you do this, because these little leads can fly off at quite a pace. So it always pays to wear protection, eye protection, and also even these ones here, the the ones for the dip switch they're quite long you can cut those shorter as well if you like so it reduces the size of everything so there we go that's that capacitor and of course there is another capacitor and that one goes over here you can see on the diagram if I move it into into shot there's the other capacitor and we've got the board lined up the right way and it goes on these two little pins here this is probably a lot easier to see on your computer screen or when you print it out yourself looking through the camera here not so good and the negative goes to the bottom so it goes this way that's where that capacitor goes piece of cake again we just spread the legs out solder it together now don't worry too much about the values I'm using this video use the values that are on the circuit diagram on the website and that'll give you the right operation the right results